All right, Russ, today's topic, when should I include my family in my infinite banking system? I yes. Think, <laughs> immediately, yes. <laughs> well, it, it, it could kind of go two ways, right? It could go down this path of like, like, when should I talk to them about it? When should I make them aware of it and make them a part of it? And then also like logistically, how should I start thinking about expanding the system um, with a policy on my wife, my kids, like, or my husband and kids, however you're thinking about it. Um, think about, I think about like you and I spending time with our daughters now on every Friday, teaching them things about infinite banking. And it's kind of like, this is coming to life for me. What about you? Yeah. I mean, when you're, when you get focused on like things beyond your control, right. Things that are going to far exceed you, which that's one of the conversations you and I had to have or got to have, I guess, with Nelson Nash, the author of Becoming Your Own Banker, many, many times. He, he talked about think 50, 70 years into the future. And if you and I do that, we know that we're not going to be here. So things have to be created and taught to the next generation. I mean, we're sitting there talking with our daughters today. We're teaching them on culture index, for instance. We're teaching them on how do they see the world. We have them do that assessment so then we can give them feedback. And it is like creating these aha moments to them. I'm sharing this with my wife. I'm talking to her. This is why this daughter struggles to look into the future. It, she's like, oh, that makes sense. So that's why she's questioning like the next step, like leaving high school. What What is the next step? She's concerned about that because she is not a forward thinker. But at the same time, she goes, well, that makes sense why our other one is. That's why she's always dreaming of ideas. And she's already got the, you know, the the four kids and the picket fence and everything else. Like she's already got that. That's just the way she sees the world. But also that's what helps when she starts thinking about how she meshes. So when you and I are talking, whether it's in economics, it's becoming your own banker, it's teaching them about what their opportunities are to be productive in the world, it is what we are talking about today, which is when do I include my family? And the answer is yes. You always include your family. You got to get them started. You got to educate on the process. Well, and here's the thing as a, just an aside, you know this, but Russ and I are not doing this perfectly, but take action, right? That's something mm -hmm. that I feel like we, we took away from this today uh, with the coaches is, man, imperfect action in the right direction, right? We don't know exactly how to teach our kids this stuff but we're doing the best we can. We're setting aside time to do it. And, and I just want to encourage you, like if you've got kids that don't know what you're doing with infinite banking, now's the time. Start small, start simple. Start with like, if you pull out the uh, Become Your Own Banker book, start with the human problems. Like Russ, you and I have been talking to our daughters about that out of Nelson's book, where he talks about he who has the gold makes the rules, right? That's right. the golden rule. And talking through that concept with your kids, they, they could be nine or 10 or eight years old and probably still have a good conversation with you about that topic. So they can, get them yeah, started. They, they, they can. It just brings me to think about the fact that we're about to have an event here May 17th through the 19th in Austin, Texas, where we're going to be meeting with our Passive Income Mastermind and a select few number of guests. So if you're an accredited investor, and you feel like, man, you need to up your game. You need to be around other people that are helping you become a sharper, uh, more skilled investor than right now. Send us a message. You can go to info at wealthwellwallstreet.com and type in the subject line, passive income retreat. And we are glad to, to send you the details on that to see if that's a fit for you. Joey, I, I love that today's topic is definitely talking about how do we include our family. So let's don't steal any more of its thunder. Let's pull up to the table and belly, belly up. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray.
Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. This is your first time joining us. Welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow-through guy didn't sound as cool to me, but enough about me. Let me introduce to you my co-host, the Italian Stallion. He's got the license plate cover to prove it, Mr. Joey Murray. Stallion, good afternoon. Man, welcome back, brother. So glad to have you. Man, I'm so grateful to be here. I've been missing this fun for a long, long time. So Stallion, tell me, what do you think is the biggest takeaway someone's going to have from today's topic of when should I include my family in my infinite banking system? Well, I, the reason why I love this question, Russ, is because there's going to be somebody that reads this and they say, I just want to know the plan. Like, how can I systematically build an infinite banking system around my family? And then there's somebody that's going to say, wait a minute, I was thinking about it from how do I get my my family involved in what we're doing from like a conceptual and how do they get ownership of this system? So I'm excited to hear what the, the guys have to say. This is, this is going to go a bunch of different ways. Do you think this is going to be somebody say, what the heck is infinite banking? <laughs> Could quite possibly. Okay. Why, don't you, why don't you give them a little heads up? Now uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Cause I, I know that you and I are not alone. Thankfully we're joined by the best financial coaches in the nation. To my left, the man I like to refer to as Mr. Incredible, his superpower is speed to financial freedom. And the real beauty to that speed is it is contagious. My man, J.D. Hill. Say hello to your fans, J.D. Hey, fans. Uh, although you're not a fan anymore. Uh, you are not a fan anymore. I think it's because <laughs> I'm getting a mullet. We, we had a vote, and I'm getting a mullet. It was my idea, though. So for those of y'all listening, don't worry. I wasn't actually peer pressured into this. Yeah, the, the natural response to that, 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 that statement is, what bet did you lose? I won the bet, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited about it. But we got to move on, though. We got to get to my right. The man that I refer to is the true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day. No problem too, too difficult to solve. If I'd only known him earlier, I'd been so much richer, said everybody. Let's welcome Mr. Downtown, Ernie Brown. Nice to see you, Ern. It is nice to be here and glad to see you back. I will say, man, I'm glad you're back. Yeah, I've been listening to you guys for the last four weeks. And you guys were like, oh, I really like that introduction that Joey did so much better than Rusty. This is like one of my favorites. Like, by the way, I, I, did, you guys got that check in the mail. I know. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Earn today, what, what do you think about today's topic? What, what do you think the biggest takeaway someone's going to have? Well, I hope I have a takeaway. I feel this is, this is an opportunity. Joey's talking about just give me the plan guy. Mm -hmm. That is very much me. I need some help dreaming about the future, picturing picturing what the future could look like. And I think today's discussion has got potential to, to clarify, to, to bring this into focus of, of what the future could look like in a family that implements infinite banking and not just a family that impl implements, but perpetuates. And I think there's going to be a couple nuggets in that vein today. Look at that wisdom dripping off the lips. Well, let's get to your right the retiree of the group, Mr. Catch Me If You Can, when he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna, he's right here dropping gold nuggets, the one and only Mark Haraguchi. Welcome, Mark. Hey, everybody. Afternoon. Where are you going this, today, Mark? Tell me. Well, I'm, I'm actually looking outside the window, and this is our first day that we are solidly breaking 70 degrees. We're supposed to hit 73. <laughs> so um, if it wasn't so bright, I'd, I'd take this camera outside and, and, and do this podcast live from the backyard. Mm -hmm. Future's so bright, you got to wear shades. I get it. Pretty much. Indoors all times. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about family and infinite banking. I mean, this is, we're coming up on the moment, man. You got, you got something special happening pretty soon, don't we? That's right. That's right. I mean, you know, talk of family. My my tribe is about to. Uh, well, e either my tribe is going to grow by one, or I'm going to be included as a plus one. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. And and that does bring in the the family aspect, right? You know, trend. I think to Ernie's point, you know, what we're talking about here is how are we shifting our mindset? Nelson's point was always that the infinite banking concept 
is a concept and it's a mental exercise. And as you move through seasons of life, your wants, needs, and desires are going to change. And so that's where mine are shifting from being an army of one where the only decision I had to worry about was my own to now, now there is a group dynamic and how do we build on that to make it just work so much better for everyone. Man, you were a lone wolf and now you're getting a wolf pack. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Ho- hopefully without the hangover part though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up what you laid down. All right, JD, tell me, tell me why are today's topic so important? You know, I, oh, well, if you love your family, it's definitely always important, but I, I think it's important from the perspective that the sooner that you can include your family uh, into these types of discussion, the, the sooner that you can actually start shaping and molding future generations and how they make financial decisions. And I think all too often um, we wait to have those conversations, if ever, right? Money is often a very taboo conversation, not just um, in social settings with friends and fam- not with friends, but also with family in general, right? We don't talk to our kids about money. Uh, we don't want them to know how much we make or those types of things. Um, and so I think infinite banking is such a, a, um, a wonderful conversation to really be able to discuss with your kids because you're teaching them principles, uh, that they get, that they can go and learn and implement. Mm, no, no doubt. I was sitting there talking with my, my oldest at breakfast yesterday morning, and we were talking about, you know, what is the purpose of everything that we're trying to do, right? We're me and uh, the two of my oldest are going through this Turo class. We're taking this, this course on how to get into the car rental game. And it's asking us, what's our destination? What's, what's our purpose here? What's going to make this interesting? What's the why behind it? And I think what you're saying is like, if we do this and we're successful at it, but we don't pass it down, then what's the real value? Cause we can't take any of this with us. Right. So we better be educating and promoting the people that are coming behind us to take action. And I, I think, it was you, Ernie, that that asked that question the other day of someone just to just to challenge that thought process of two generations from now. What are they going to be thinking about? And I, I love that that thought process. So, Joey, what do you think, man? What's the what's the most important thing about this? Well, I, I think you guys have already hit on it, but the idea that it is a family banking system. Right. Everything that we have been taught in the financial world is the silo, everything that this is your retirement vehicle. This is your savings vehicle for this purpose or that purpose or whatever. But it's ne- it's it's just designed that each generation almost starts over again. And and to me, what's exciting about infinite banking is that we get to be a part of starting something that will continue on and it will only get better with time, assuming that we can do a good job of passing this down. Uh, And the knowledge of it is the most important. So yeah. When should you involve your family in your infinite banking system from day one, right? And when it's appropriate for your kids at whatever level where they can understand I mean, that, that to me is the exciting part. Yeah. I, and what you're saying there, Joey, this siloing method, I've been thinking on this a little bit. What, what does that mean? And I think uh, to me, the, the, most, the most clear thing that's going on to me, the silo effect is college educations. Most in, in, in the last hundred years, colleges has become, in a sense, the norm. It's the, it's the thing that you do particularly in the last 60 years. So that's a couple generations now in the college. What happens? Child grows up, borrows a bunch of money for college, spends the next 10 to 20 years paying back that college. Next generation comes along, borrows a bunch of money, spends the next 10 to 20 years paying off that college. Take the college and apply that to homes, vehicles, investments, retirement, income, all of those things and put each of those in a silo. These are normal things of life that are being, um, the opportunity remains either to rely on the same bank across multiple generations to get the job done, that's not yours, um, or for that person to be very, very strict and conservative 
with the limited amount of cash that they have to make those things happen. And each generation gets no further ahead. 100%. I've just been trying to flesh this out. What does this look like over multiple generations? What's going on? And, and that helps me to even gain clarity in my infinite banking system. As we're so dialed in and pursuing financial freedom, but what kind of opportunity is this creating just within the family? I had a uh, conversation with my parents about this as I was getting ready to transition out of flying airplanes. And my dad said, okay, so what exactly is this thing that you're doing? Come on, tell me. Tell me again. <laughs> and, and so we had that conversation about three or four times, which I, I thought was, was reasonable. And it was just that he had to take it in, in bits and pieces. But when he saw the moving pieces of the puzzle, so my dad is uh, in his early 80s, I'm in my mid 40s. And he said, man, yeah, if only I had known about this earlier, this, this, this just makes perfect sense. He's like, I totally get it. I, I, I understand what you're talking about. And I said, yeah, shame on you for not figuring this out earlier, because we'd be having a totally different conversation if you could have put this on me when I was a kid. And that's obviously another question that comes up, right, is, you know, but one of the things we're talking about is, well, when is this important? And my comment is, well, when is this ever not important? And 14 days is the earliest that you can start a policy on a newborn. And wow, think about the long-term trajectory. Imagine if I would have had a 44-year-old policy right now. Think oh. about the internal inertia. That thing, I mean, that thing would just be like the Titanic, except it wouldn't sink. It would just plow on through that iceberg and break it. <laughs> so, so you're 44 years old, Mark? I know. It's, Holy I'm halfway there. That's it. <laughs> For a downhill. couple more days, at least. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can the same age. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. I got to bring your buddy up, you know, just come on. Get with me. Ryan was in here the other day and he actually blew up this little balloon and then drew on it. And if you're if you're not watching our podcast, either on YouTube or if you're not a part of the inner circle, you should be. Uh, I ask you to go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash inner circle and you can find out more behind the scenes stuff like how my son drew a little picture of this little person and he called it my future self. And I said, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. So how far in the future is this guy? And he said, 15 years. And I said, well, how old will I be in 15 years? He said, 60. And I thought, no, I won't. <laughs> I can't be 60. Can but you then you did the math and you realized he was yeah. right. No, I knew he was right. But oh, okay. I mean, think okay. about that. That's that's pretty crazy because time's happening fast. And to your point, Mark, had your dad been able to do some of these things before, what that would have looked like. But also we have the ability to plant that seed today, right? If we haven't done it, we have the ability to plant it today. And in light of everything, right, when we're talking about there's three kind of components to the infinite banking concept and applying it. First is we identify, we have to identify where the cash is going to come from. And then secondly, then we're going to start designing a system. And the, who do we start with first, Joe? Ourselves. Ourselves. We're, we're going to be the first ones the breadwinners of the family should be the first ones setting up the system. And then secondly, that's where our family is going to get involved. That's where we're going to design plans on our spouses. I was about to say spouses. That would, you know, depending on what state you're in, that could be legit or not. Stop it. Spouse <laughs> and kids, right? And, and that's where I see this applying. So is there anything that's happening today that you think that would bring all of this to the forefront? Of? Well, I'm going to say that to me, the most important thing we can do is to get our kids insured, our kids and spouses insured as fast as possible. And here's the reason why. There's a lot of other reasons, but one of them is that this doesn't insure or guarantee that you're going to be able to um, educate your family on this process. But when you have them insured and now they're a part of the actual system, it certainly lends itself to the fact that now you have something that you have to explain to them that will make this all kind of fit together. I mean, Russ, for you and I, right now, we're sitting there going through their individual policies with our daughters on these calls we're doing every week, giving them this kind of financial literacy, this basic stuff. 
And part of that is showing them what that we started for them years ago. And what's, what is that doing? I mean, that's spurring conversations about, man, what could I do with that money? Like, how should I steward that money? Right. Those are not conversations I was having with my parents. And it's not because infinite banking or a life insurance policy makes that happen. We have to still take the initiative, but man, it sure does help. This podcast is amazing. Almost too amazing, Russ. There's too many ideas and I don't know where to get started creating passive income. Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Get started today. Well, it, it, it helps us connect the dots, right? Like we, we need to be talking about these items around them so that they know what's happening. So then they'll know what to do. All right. So there's, there's three main points to today's discussion, I believe. First, there's the conceptual, right? There's the education, the conversations around what infinite banking is. And I want to come, because that was a question I mentioned in the intro, is, is there going to be somebody who's going to ask the question, what the crap is infinite banking? So I do want to make sure we get that answered. <laughs> Secondly, I think it's the logistical part of like, when do we start policies? At, at what um, age, uh, income, what are the needs, that kind of stuff. And then third, practically, are there limits, right? Are there opportunities that I should be taking advantage of? Is there um, a system or, or a process in which I can implement this approach? Okay. All right. So conceptually, let, let's talk about first, what is infinite banking, Joe? Infinite banking is the process of taking over the banking function. Right. So as you finance things in your life, as you build passive income streams, taking back and having the control of capital that you can then leverage into all these other things. Uh, that may be too conceptual, but that that's how I think about it. All right. So what are some of the education that people what is what is the education that someone needs, in your opinion, JD, in order to get a good grasp of what Joey just said? Well, I think people need to um, understand the difference between savings and investing. Uh, I think okay. that's, that's extremely crucial because there is a difference between the two. I, I think oftentimes people think that they're really bad saver or really bad investors, but the reality is that they're just not good savers. Mm -hmm. um, and what infinite banking does is because where it's a fit is it's the place, like Joey just said, where you hold your cash before you go and make the investment right? It's not the investment itself. Uh, and so I think you have to get your arms around that educational piece of the difference between savings versus investing and how those two things are actually supposed to work together. So Ern, I, I know that you're, you're fairly newly married as it relates to, you know, the, the three of us right here on the, on the call or four of us uh, as Mark has dipped off for it. So, but still you and your wife are a family. So how did you start interacting and having these conversations about infinite banking with her? Cause that's really <laughs> the connection, right? The, who, who do we put this on and how do we start bringing our family members into the fold? Yeah. I, well, I remember when we were dating, I gave when, as I was letting Caroline get to know who I was, <laughs> this is so nerdy of me, but I gave her an article that Nelson Nash wrote because he was so important to me on a date. I printed out an article and stapled it together and said, Hey, I want you to read this. <laughs> and, and then I remember also another time when we were uh, engaged, I met her somewhere actually it was in a coffee shop and I was reading the book entrusted. Yeah which, you know, we weren't even married yet. And here I am like reading a book about <laughs> this family legacy plan and all these things um, that comes to mind. So the, I think the point is we started really early. It was something, um, you know, I didn't tell her how much life insurance I had on me until we were married. Um, <laughs> but once I did tell her about how, you know, when we had disclosure of, of finances where I was keeping my cash and some of the things we were doing, I was doing with it. And then once we got married, uh, very soon after, we um, we spent some nights uh, reading Becoming Your Own Banker together. 
and talking through how this works. And then as quickly as I could bought a life insurance policy on her. And, uh, and we've gone from there, every financial decision that we are making now, we talk through it and we talk it over and over and over and just to make sure that she's included. So I don't know if that's a perfect answer, but we started early as best as I can. We, we stay consistent and I make sure that she's involved in the things that I want to do and the things we're doing. Well, Joey and I, as we said a second ago, are trying to share these ideas with our daughters. And we actually took the Becoming Your Own Banker book. So we teach on Friday mornings with them. We took the Becoming Your Own Banker book, said, okay, I want you to read it. And we're going to start reviewing the book. And it was really eye-opening to us as we started looking at that, like where when you're teaching someone 16 years old and under who don't have any background in finance, right? That even the, some of the basic terms of checking accounts doesn't make sense. It really challenges how do you get this on a you and them level, right? Like how do you get it to a point where they can absorb what's happening? And one of the first things we did is that we had them go through the human problems. If you've ever read the book, Becoming Your Own Banker, he, he talks about these five human problems and by the way, if you want a copy of that, you can go to westwaltwallstreet.com forward slash infinite banking. And on that page, you can click on it and buy it right off the infinite banking uh, practitioner or, uh, Nelson Nash Institute uh, page. But uh, just going through those specific things, talking about our need to always be learning, right? Not to have the arrival syndrome, knowing that we have to protect everything that we have. Otherwise, someone will come and steal it you know, Willie Sutton's law on taxes, <laughs> understanding, use it or lose it. And it goes on and on through these human problems. I think it's just interesting. So if you're, if you're exposing maybe a child to this concept and wanting to get them on board or someone who doesn't have a, a financial background, I start with those five things, because if you can understand that, then you understand the need and the want behind this. All right, so let's move on to, to the second point I think we need to cover today, which is the logistical part of when do we start policies? Mark, obviously you're the you're the tactician in the group. Talk to us about that. When do you think we should start evaluating bringing on our family um, into this process? I think there are ways that you can bring the family in in measured uh, succession. So that, for example, go back to that earlier comment I made about a, a 14 year old baby, right? An 14 infant. day old. Sorry, 14. yeah. Sorry, 14 day old. Thank you. 14 day infant. Well. Clearly, they have no idea what's going on. So you, you, you really can't bring them into the conversation. But we can set the foundation, right? We can set the system in place. We can let it continue to grow, have a safe, secure place to store. And as they get older, as we go through that first step of the conceptual, we can bring in the conversations like Russ and Joey and, and JD have with their kids. Hey, how do we look at these things? What, are we, what problems are we trying to solve? And then you begin to share with them the tool that actually is, quote, tied with them, that at the time and place of your choosing, because you are the owner of it, when they are responsible, then that torch can be handed off. And just like, uh, I think it was it, was it, was it Peter Parker's uncle who said that with, with great power comes uh, great responsibility. And that's exactly what the handing off of that torch is. You have got, you are basically handing them you know, the, the, the keys to their potential future. And it's up to them if they want to safeguard it or just go throw it around in the night and see what happens. So I like the uh, Marvel uh, <laughs> analogies if I can. <laughs> so what, so what would you JD add to that as far as like maybe just some technically, like how do you think about expanding the system from who do you ensure when things like that, any other, any other additional things besides, you know, when you can get your 14 day old baby insurance. <laughs> yeah. I, um, Russ had touched on this and I've, I've talked about this often to, uh, you know, the folks that I get the fortunate opportunity to coach, um, is I look at things as kind of like a waterfall. Uh, for those of y'all listening, you don't see my hands moving. Um, but, but basically you've got mom and dad first and we, we want to max them out to the extent that we can. Uh, and the reason is because when one spouse passes, um, all that, that resource is going to flow to the, uh, the surviving spouse 
And then when that spouse passes, everything then flows down to, to the children from there. And so <laughs> don't go chasing waterfalls. That's right. And so, um, my perspective on that is max out what you can on, on mom or dad, and then max out what you can on uh, the other spouse and then move down from there to, to kids. Uh, while I think it's very noble that we oftentimes want to do everything we can for our kids, particularly if you have a background where you didn't have much, um, we can't forsake ourselves because if I do something on my child and something happens to me, how is that plan going to stay fulfilled, right? How is that plan going to continue to move forward if there isn't resource for the surviving spouse to make sure it happens that way? Uh, so um, that's that's my perspective on on how to properly do that. Well, but somebody's listening and they say, isn't it cheaper though to ensure that younger generation, like if, if I want to do get started in this, why wouldn't I just do a big policy on them to begin with? Yeah. Th- which again, isn't the first time we'd hear that. I think the, the reality is a couple of things. One, you're limited anyways on how much you can put on a child, right? Relative to what you have on the parents. At the end of the day, this is insurance. And when you look at insurance, insurance companies are insuring risk. Um, and so they would look awkwardly at an application for $5 million of insurance, if you will, on a child, but mom and dad don't have any. Uh, like <laughs> yeah, that doesn't <laughs> like go well. What's what's happening here? And and so there's there's limits in, in, in those types of things on what you can actually do for, for the child. The other element of that too, and you hit on this, is that it is, it's less expensive per thousand of insurance on a child. So in other words, putting say $10,000 a year of insurance on a child may buy them a million or $2 million of coverage. But for me, it may only buy me half a million. Right. So, so it's vastly different in terms of how much coverage you can get per dollar of what you're putting into the policy. Well, I would say too, in this light, as we move into the practical of how do we apply this, right? What are those things that we're tactically doing there? I just got off a call with a guy earlier and he's been implementing the infinite banking concept for 10 years. And he's like, you know, now I haven't been doing it perfectly, but I've been saving money with inside of these contracts, building a system, right, for myself, my family. But one of the things I realized is that I haven't made it the core. I haven't really got after this. And I think that that's what you start to see is that we want to pass that knowledge down to our kids and to those grandkids to say, this isn't just one of the things that you do. Like, oh, okay, well, JD wears a mullet and cut off jeans, then I wear that. Like, you know, like that's just a passed down thing. We don't want, it's just because it, there's got to be a reason behind it. It's got to be like, this is the thing. And we got to express that to everybody. So when, when we're teaching our kids, Joey, we're trying to emphasize that in our financial world, this sits in the center and it, it is, you know, there's these spokes, right. That, that go all the way around and make the wheel go round. But without this thing in the middle, all that stuff breaks down. So talk to me a little bit about just examples or stories that you've seen of how this applies. Mark, you want to jump in there? Yeah, we actually have a, uh, uh, regrettably through the the passing of of one of our our, our members, uh, family members passed away. And as tragic and, and heartbreaking as that is, what is so enlightening about the story is the plan that was put in place so that there was a family banking system going on. And when that family elder did pass, as the dust begins to settle, now the fruit of that labor is now coming to bear of, wow, look at this. Look at the legacy that's being passed on. The, the, the ancillary benefit of using this as a place to store cash, utilize it along the way for opportunities, life needs, Well, underlying it is an actual life insurance system. And so when that individual passed away, the death benefit paid out. And where did that death benefit go? Just like JD said, it flowed down to the beneficiaries, which in this case is the next generation. And now they are now their coffers are filled up and they can move forward and carrying on that legacy and that tradition. So out of that tragedy comes a system that benefits the legacy. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I, I, I love how the wisdom of the, the patriarchs and matriarchs of families impact generations behind that. Ern, you want to jump in there real quick? Yeah, I, I just think of this other, um, this couple that I've 
that I've, I've coached and they've, they're, they're friends um, before. And, and one of the things about their story, this is sort of on the reverse side. It's interesting to me, this, this guy, when, when he was just born, his parents bought a life insurance policy on him. Um, just a, just a small one. And in his uh, right, I guess when he got married, so in his late twenties, um, his parents gave that policy, that insurance policy to him, changed ownership to him, and he got access to all the cash value that was in it. Uh, he found out that his new bride, her parents had done the same thing when she was a baby, had bought a life insurance policy on her, again, a small one. And at, at um, when they got married, her parents turned ownership over to her. And so this new couple I'm jealous of this, by the way, received these insurance policies and had a significant amount of cash value. And they took those and they've, they've moved uh, out from Atlanta to Birmingham now down to the beach and live in the 30A area, have bought three properties down there and are doing short-term rentals in two, living in one, and they have it even available for this. And I just think, what an amazing start. And so naturally this was, this was happening and he was starting to put it together. Um, actually we reconnected. I was wearing a wealth of that wall street in the gym one day and it came out this, how all this started. And I heard this story. And when he received this, this got him way excited about infinite banking. So imagine for your children, if you do this on them and turn it over to them, how much more excited are they going to be to continue this going forward? It's so important to get our kids involved in this stuff. It's so important to start teaching them about how money works. I mean, I had that conversation driving to breakfast just yesterday to say, hey, look, I'm going to do you a huge injustice if you think that money just grows on trees. That if you don't understand that you have to work for it or you have to get something to work for, right? Like I learned because my parents had no money. They couldn't teach me how money worked. I had to go work for it. And I was like, you know, I, I'm doing you a disservice by not teaching you how working for money is hard and you don't want to have to do it. And you've got to learn these strategies, got to pick these things up. And it's so important for us as we're learning them, not to let that stuff die with us. All right. Final takeaway, Joe, I know you want to jump in there. Well, I, I just want to share one other small little practical thing that I'm, I'm aspiring to. Uh, I'm not there yet. I think you and I have started down the path of teaching our daughters on Fridays, but one of our friends, uh, Jason, he takes his kids, his whole family on a trip every year and they get away and they do their annual family banking, like getaway, so to speak. And I don't know what all goes on in there, but I just know from the notes he shared with me, like they, sh they talk about gratitude. They talk about what they're going to invest in, what they're going to give towards. And it really does bring that whole family banking system into view and helps those kids. I, I can't imagine what sort of perspective those kids have that most kids will never have. And, and so to me, like, that's a beautiful picture of the initiative that you can have by having a banking system like this for your family and the education that goes along with it. So just as an inspiration to me, hopefully it's inspiring to you as well. Mm. Mark, final takeaway. I've always been a part of a family, but now that I am getting ready to create my own family, uh, this just makes so much more sense. And it's so awesome to now move into that newer season and look at the opportunities and the, the, the landscape ahead of now creating a generational system for my own personal immediate family, which is going to be awesome. So cool. JD. Yeah. You know, um, I think infinite banking makes you more intentional about financial, about finances. Um, traditional planning is to me, it's lazy, right? It's because it, it's, it's passive, right? You're deferring that and, 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 and giving that away to someone else to do for you while infinite banking, it, it's so intentional. And so even in the way that I communicate with my kids, I mean, they're four, seven and eight, so they're, they're young, 
but the, the language and the things that I use with them to teach them about financial responsibility and stewardship, right. Is things like, so we don't have chores. We have contributions, right? Like I want my kids to understand that you're contributing to the value of the home, right? Because, because you help us, uh, keep it clean, keep it, um, put together and all those types of things. And, you know, I help them understand that, that wealth creation is directly tied to value creation. And, and the more wealth you want to create, the more value you need to add. And so as a parting thought, like my, my, my thoughts are, is what I love about infinite banking is that it, it allows you to be much more creative and much more intentional with how you have these types of conversations with your family. Well, I, I know that we, we all got a chance to meet Nelson Nash and to spend a little time with him from before he passed. And we got to see him talk about the four generations that his family banking system was impacting, right? And I, I hope we all have that same blessing to be able to, to share this with someone else. It doesn't die with us that we can share it with someone else so that we can impact so many more people. This is a conversation that we have frequently inside the inner circle. This is something that if you're not a member of our community, we, we talk about because it is the hub. It's not the only thing, it's not the thing, but is the vehicle that we use to get us to our pathway to financial freedom. So if you haven't already joined us inside the community, you have an opportunity, go to whatswhatwallstreet.com forward slash passport. And in there, inside of that one course, you can start to learn what are those, what are those why items for you? What are those goals that you have that needs to be greater? That why always has to be greater than the why not. And if, if you're motivated because you have kids, you're about to have kids, you, your kids are grown and out of the house and you want to be able to impact them and their kids, this is something that we would invite you into so that you can take part in this same discussion. As always, we appreciate having you listening. We thank you for always reviewing, rating, and keeping the podcast front and center, sharing it with your friends. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.